There's a trite, overused saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah, maybe if you're bad at writing. I write good stuff and things, so i confident I could describe a picture in less than a thousand words. That is, unless you're paying me by the word, in which case I'll give you as many as you want. At least, that's what I thought. On our last full day in Kennecott, my dad treated us to a flight over the glaciers. And dear viewer, let me say, I have never seen anything like it. Words truly can't do it justice. So I guess it's a good thing I recorded so much video. Speaking of which, this video is pretty much the same format as my other videos. I'll babble on a bit about what you're seeing, and there'll be some pretty background music, and it'll wrap up in a reasonable amount of time. If, however, you want to see the whole thing, or pretty much the whole thing, I'll have a separate video that's just a lightly edited version of the entire flight. The sights and sounds of a Cessna flying a few hundred feet over some of the most remote and stunning vistas you'll ever see. It's even in 4K! Mostly. But back to the flight. Our pilot was named Keen, and he was joined by another pilot, Oren, who was learning the route. And what a route it was. We headed east from McCarthy Airport, following the Nazina River. Then we turned north at Sourdough Peak, and beside us were the Mile High Cliffs. I mentioned in the last video how difficult it is to judge scale and distance, and that was even clearer here. We were several thousand feet up, and then the mountaintops were above us. The cliffs aren't a mile high, of course, but they might as well have been. In this section of the flight transpired one of the most unexpected moments of my life. For a bit of background, when I was younger I wanted to be a pilot. My first job was actually a dispatch for a small flight school. They promised I'd get my pilot's license in a year and instead I got a whopping two hours of flight time and then cheated out of two months of wages. But one of the first things they teach you in flight school, I mean probably like literally the first thing, is don't point the plane at the ground. Like ever. And if looking out the window all you see is ground, you're probably gonna have a bad day. So here we were in a 1971 Cessna 172, the same type I have both of my flight hours in, and we do this slow 360 degree turn where for several minutes the sheer cliffs filled the entire view screen. It was not something I ever thought I'd see in my life and it was incredible. Even more incredible, and once again the deceptive scale of everything, the pilot said we could have flown at that rock wall for several more minutes and still not have been close to it. Remarkable. After that amazing moment, we continued north along the river, and we climbed, and climbed, and climbed. Even so, we barely cleared the top of the Rhone Glacier. Well again, I say barely, but we could have been a thousand feet above it, and we probably were. It just didn't look that way. Soon the land and glacier fell away beneath us, and once again we were surrounded by cliffs of snow and valleys of ice, teal and gray rivers and lakes, azure blue puddles and pillows of white, glaciers merging like great slow moving rivers of snow and stone. How many people have seen this? How many would? Has anyone hiked across any of this? Has any human ever set foot in these incredible spaces? Could they? We were the only humans for how many miles? Dozens? Hundreds? 
It seemed like thousands. If we crashed here, how long until we could be rescued? What would that even look like? Reassuringly, I've been noting our pilot had been updating someone on the radio at every change in course. Or maybe those messages were just standard procedure, radiating out into space, unheard by any machine or man. We were alone out here, far above an ice-aged world. A peak back in time millions of years. It was incredible. Humbling. It was breathtaking. Eventually we turned west and then south, over the stairway icefall and down the length of the Kennecott Glacier. flew over the confluence of the Kennecott and Root Glaciers, where the day before my dad and I had hiked. Then it was over the gray moraine, Kennecott itself, seemingly so small from this height. Even more amazing, in the early days of the mine, the glacier was nearly as high as we were flying. There are pictures that show views taken from the glacier. Remarkable, the passage of time. Maybe that picture's worth a thousand words. Maybe all these were. I'm not sure. 
this voiceover is only 857. Thanks for watching.